I like big butts, and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny when a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. So that's what we're doing today. We are working butts because everybody loves butts. I love butts. He loves butts. Kaya loves butts. Everybody loves butts. So this is going to be a glute focused leg day. I'm going to show you a bunch of my favorite exercises that if I'm training glutes, these are the ones that I like the most. I will show you tips, a little bit of technique work that will help you take some of those exercises that you probably already do and just make them a little bit better. So let's grow some big booties. Let's go. All right, so. Today is a glute focused workout, so we're gonna start with a little glute activation. However, every leg day I've been finding myself starting with this warm up. It, maybe it's these three exercises or something similar, but it's no body weight and just a little booty band. Um, these are like huge right now. Everybody has them and they're, they're fantastic. So the three exercises that we're gonna be doing are lateral walks and squats. So it's a combination, which I'll show you. A reverse frog hyperextension. And the last one is a glute bridge with abductions. So we're gonna be hitting that upper booty. We're gonna be hitting that side booty. We're just gonna be hitting our booty. We're gonna warm it up before we get to those heavier compound movements. So lateral walks and squats. We're gonna go, everything is uh, three rounds, 20, 15 to 20 reps of every one. Uh, but the lateral walks and squats, we're doing 20. So you're gonna go five steps right, five squats. Five steps left, five squats. Five steps right, five squats. Five steps left, five squats. So you're gonna end up with uh, 20 total walking back and forth plus 20 squats. Now I've seen people do it s several different ways where they're like, just standing and going like this. I like to actually get into a squat. That way my butt is pretty much activated as is. I get into my squat. I'm gonna step as far as I can over and then bring it back to shoulder width. And then we'll do five steps this way. So wide, boom, wide, together, wide, together, wide, together. Then I'll do five squats with the band you're going to notice when i come down feet are about shoulder width and when i come down i want to abduct my knees just a little bit so instead of just keeping them straight i want you to like actually make them go out so that your elbows will come inside your knees instead of just like touching so come down knees out wide and then back up you don't have to fully extend up. I like to almost keep it more like a pulsing. So feet out, up, back down, back down, back down. When you get up here, back into your squat, then you'll go the opposite way. So left, together, left. So five this way, five squats, five this way, five squats, five that way, 20 and 20. You'll then go right into your frog reverse hypers, which will be over here. You just need a bench. And we're just gonna keep this on, no weight. We're not gonna put any weight between our feet. Again, this is our glute warm up, And because you're gonna be supersetting, your butt will be on fire. So where I, uh, I kind of put this bench just right about where my like pelvic bone is so that my knees will be able, whoa, I'm gonna turn it around. So that my knees can kind of come forward and then I just like hold underneath the branch, so something like that, right? There we go. So end of the bench is pretty much right at my pelvic, like my hip bones. 
So frog means your feet are gonna be together, heels together, feet together, and then you're gonna come down, uh, tuck your knees under you, and then you're gonna extend up as high as you can, squeezing that butt. Come back around, and then squeeze up. Instead of like out here, you're gonna go up with it. So right now, we're getting that like upper side booty. Feet up, feet in, and then up. And with having the band and keeping your feet together, you're already doing that hip adduction. So it's a hip adduction, like constant hold. And then you're just going through the motion of tucking your knees in and then up your reverse hyperextension. <sighs> Last but not least, sorry I'm out of breath. We will then go to uh, a static glute, hold, uh, glute bridge hold. Glute bridge hold is up here. I also kind of do this like a frog as well, like with I try to get my feet together, but if they're flat, that's also okay. We're gonna hold in a bridge and you're just gonna pulse. Oh, I want these back up. We're just gonna squeeze, hold for like two seconds, then together. Squeeze, squeeze. And this one, definitely like 20. You could do like 20, 20 to 30 reps. Sometimes I'll do like 30, do 10 come down, right back up, just get like a little quick pause in there, do 10 more, and then right back up. So these not, we're not just going through the motions here. I want you to actually squeezing that band, squeeze that butt, and lift up. Hold for a good two to three seconds on each one. And we will go through three rounds of that. And by that time, your butt's on fire, and then we're gonna get to squatting. are super activated this is when i go to some sort of compound movement which would be a squat um so do this on whatever leg day it is quad day ham day it's always great to fire your glutes up before you squat i just think it feels good and you'll feel them through the movement more because a lot of times when you are just squatting you're focusing it's like all quad you're focusing on quads but fire them up first so that you're like feeling them and then you'll be using them a lot more so we are going to go to squats i'm going to show you a slightly different variation to like just a regular barbell squat we're going to have a 30 percent like a a 30 degree lean so what i mean is when we have just our regular barbell no matter what stance you have, no matter if you're high, uh, high bar or low bar, we generally want to keep we generally want to keep our chest up, and we come straight up, straight down. What I want you to do is lean forward with your torso just a little bit, just 30 degrees. So as you come down, that butt is actually going to hinge back. You're going to hinge at your hips, hinge at your hips squat down and then push up when you come up i like to kind of bring my hips forward just like you were doing like a deadlift at the end of a deadlift you bring hips forward squeeze your butt and it's what uh what i say it makes an ugly butt it doesn't like when you squeeze and like throw your hips forward i call that ugly butt it does not look cute but that's where you're gonna get some good contraction if you have a smith machine this 30 degree squat is going to be so much better because the bar is going to come up straight up and straight down 
and you just have to hinge. So that bar will stay, you just hinge, squeezing your butt, contract up. Your feet are gonna be a little slightly wider, a little slightly wider than your shoulder, toes slightly pointed out. The weight should be mostly in your heels. So as you come back, a lot of times my toes will come up. If you have a problem, sometimes just sticking a plate here so that maybe your feet are then more even, or if you feel off balance, put like little two and a halfs under your feet. But my, generally my toes kind of are up in the air. And when I push up from my squat, I'm pushing with the outside of my heel. All that weight is on that outside of that heel. And then you'll be thrusting pretty much forward. So with a barbell, I'm then gonna show you if you have this machine, it is king. But Smith machine would be next after my king. And then this is, would be just your regular barbell squat with a 30 degree tilt. So feet slightly, uh, feet, feet slightly wider, toes slightly out. So instead of being like this, you're gonna lean forward a little bit, sticking that butt out. You're gonna hinge and squat down and then pushing through those heels. Come down, push through those heels create an ugly butt. Now, the perfect machine, if you have this, ah, you should have like angels coming out, like, at, like the sun, just sun flares all over it. I love, love this machine. Um, it is called a V squat, power squat, whatever you wanna call it, hack squat. Um, this is a power squat. So what we're gonna be doing is creating that 30 degree lean by facing it. So now I'm already in it. You're gonna put that, well I probably should have like warmed up or something. <laughs> My feet are gonna go back. My body is now already in the forward lean. The first part of the movement is gonna start with your hips. So hips come back and then you'll squat down. So instead of maybe being up here and your knee, like if you're doing more of a quad day, your knees are the, your knees are the first thing that bend. What I want you to do, the first thing that bends is if I'm standing up straight, we're gonna hinge at our hips. So it's just this little boop and then we're gonna go down. So hinge over at the hips then you go down, pushing straight up, hips forward, ugly butt. <laughs> you guys will know. If you, I don't want to show you from behind, but you'll get it. Just needs <laughs> ugly butt. Feet slightly wider, same stance as we were doing over there. Feet slightly wider, toes pointed out. Uh, hands up, hinge at hips, let your butt draw back. Squat down and then up. Hips forward, squeeze your butt. One more time, hinge. And really squeeze and thrust forward. Oh. So if you have this machine, especially on hamstring or glute day, face backwards, hinge over so you get that 30 degree lean and then really thrust your hips forward at the end, ugly butt. <laughs> wouldn't be a glute day unless there were some hip thrusts. So your the the greatest contraction of your glutes is when your hips are fully extended. So that is what a hip thrust is. Um, I'm going to actually go over some tips and techniques that I actually most recently learned that have really changed my hip thrusts. Um, it's 
things that I, not that I was wrong, yeah, I guess it was wrong, things that I was doing wrong, and a little, little technique, a little change of your head is gonna change the entire movement. So, let's go through basic, basic hip thrusts. Um, where you wanna position yourself, uh, a lot of times I see people and only like their upper back is on. I want you inch yourself up, and I want the, the bottom of this should rest just under your, where your scapulas are, basically right in the middle of your lats. So my scapulas are right about here. So if you're doing like a row, right under your scapulas. Your feet, so if you wanna do a couple test runs where your feet should be at, at the top of your thrust, your shins should be vertical instead of like instead of this where i'm like pushing away i'm pushing back this way they're not vertical so i need to inch my feet back and at the top they're going to be vertical straight up and down lastly this is the most most important and this is the tip that i just learned recently is don't move your head you're going to keep your head straight forward, chin tucked, and you're gonna keep your upper chest completely stable. It's not gonna move. So generally when I watch people do hip thrusts, we do this and we face the ceiling and then we rock back down and then we face the ceiling. Is it wrong? I don't know, but there's a way to make it just a little bit better. So less rocking less doing this where you're rocking forward rocking backward we're going to keep so at the bottom my bar is here you're going to keep your head forward and it's not going to move so focus on something on the wall and you're not going to move your head don't move your eyes don't move anything so now instead of going like this you're going to go like this <laughs> so notice nothing from my chest up didn't move so less movement of the chest well zero movement of the chest and we went all pelvic movement so down looking at my spot and up head stays exactly where it's at down up watch the difference So this is the rocking, this is the no rocking, stable chest. This is all glutes. So down and up, squeeze. So you might not be fully extended, but you're also rocking back and over, over exerting your erectors anyway. So if you do hip thrust, and you're like, oh, I kind of feel it in my lower back. You shouldn't feel it in your lower back at all. So we're gonna, take out that movement, chest stays stable, head stays straight, and like I kind of tuck my chin, and then I keep it there the whole time. And the only thing that moves are my hips to full extension. So let's see it with a bar. And bring it on back. So I'm using just a towel for padding. Um, if you have a gym where they have like the, the squat, I don't, what are they called? Like bitch pads or something. I feel that I forget, but you know, the people that are like, Oh, that hurt. Squatting hurts my, my back. It digs. But get one of those because this is a little bit uncomfortable. So the, where you want to place the bar, wrap something on it, uh, get your, your bar tampon and wrap it on, <laughs> wrap it on it. Sounds so gross. You're gonna wheel it back so that the bar is right in that crease of your hips. To get the barbell up, I'm gonna get my elbows up on the bench once they come up, or actually get your feet up too. So feet on the floor, elbows up on the bench. The bar already wants to come up. So we get our shoulder blades up back, uh, uh, you're, re you're resting your back just below your scapula. Try to get in like a full extension, see if you already have a vertical leg. 
and then move your feet in position. Feet are about shoulder width apart, toes slightly out, and then I just kind of hold on to the bar or even just bring your arms out. Biggest key here is look forward, chin down. Do not move your chest. It is all with your pelvis, just a pelvic thrust. It's not a rock and back and forth because when you rock, you end up and like things get loose or you start moving position. Ooh, my hips are getting tired. I gotta go now. <laughs> so, all right, head forward, chin down, let your hips sink and then extend up, keeping that head in position. Squeeze your butt. It's a much smaller movement, but a lot more isolating on the butt. And you'll find that you no longer need to stack like 225 on here. The movement is slower, more controlled. Focus on really just squeezing up with that butt. Keep your chest stable. No movement here, all the movement here. And then on every rep, hold for two seconds. If you're just winging it up and down, you start getting that momentum. Yeah, you can do a lot of heavy weight. Slow on the descent, up and hold. Squeeze, really concentrate, focus on your butt. Four sets, eight to 10. So it's a heavier rep range. Eight is like, you wanna go heavy. So you're going as heavy as you can failing around eight to 10 reps, whatever that may be. Huh, I need a nap. Woo, all right, next up, we are finally getting into some supersets. So we did our glute activation. We did two of our heavy compound movements. Now we're gonna get into some a little higher reps it's good to do a mixture of like heavier reps with like our squats and our hip thrusts now we're going to get into some more toning uh hypertrophy i guess if you will um so this is a superset so two things at once we are doing what i call a low bulgarian or a sprinter bulgarian so a regular Bulgarian squat, I'll actually show you with the, this foot forward. Regular Bulgarian squat, your, foot is, your opposite foot is up on the bench. You have your dumbbells right here, your chest is up, you're coming down, and you're coming straight up. So it's a lot of quad, hams and glutes, very great exercise. But today, we want to focus more on that posterior. So anytime you wanna focus on posterior, you're gonna add a little bit of a lean, especially if it's like an exercise like this. So now with our Bulgarian or our sprinter Bulgarian or our low Bulgarian, we're gonna have a torso lean, a forward torso lean. So you're gonna hinge over at the hips. You still have your dumbbells right here. So instead of being straight up, I'm now leaning forward. See that, just that 30 degree lean. And when you come down, this knee, instead of going straight down and straight up, and same with this one, this knee usually will go straight down, straight up. It's gonna go back. It's gonna go down and back. Our dumbbells, I want you to come down, touch them to the ground right by your toe. So then you automatically have that forward lean, your knee goes back, and then when you stand up, hips forward and squeeze the butt so here is like more for a quad day quad day is this great exercise definitely you should do it if you want to focus on your hamstrings and glutes more we're going to start here dumbbells are a little bit out in front of us you keep that forward lean keep your back nice and flat and tight and no rounding so you're not rounding and coming down you're keeping a very neutral spine forward lean bring those dumbbells to the ground this knee comes back and then i just kind of touch the dumbbells to the ground 
and then back up, staying in that forward lean instead of coming up like this. So down, knee goes back, touch, squeeze your butt. Squeeze your butt. You'll feel a huge difference with that lean as you cut. Obviously, you're going to get some quad action in here, but that lean is where you're focusing all on that posterior chain. So even if you want to try to just do them same side by side, do one upright and then do one leaning forward and you will feel such a dramatic difference from your glutes and hamstrings. So we are going, I think it was 12 to 15 for this. So you're doing 12 to 15 both legs but I want you to do both exercises, which next exercise, we're gonna use a band or you can do a cable. I just like a band, so I'm not taking up different uh, stations. I'm gonna loop it around my foot like so. And we're gonna do kneeling glute kickbacks. So I hold it with my hands in basically just a all fours motion or platform and bring your knee forward and then you're going to kick up and go up as high as you can or kick out kick back kick back extend up there we go those are the words knee forward kick out and extend butt uh, extend up which then hits your butt so this little motion when you come here is basically like that reverse hyper that we did at the very beginning which then hits that like upper upper booty so knee forward come up and then extend up as far as you can bring that knee back forward and extend up as high as you can. You can do this also standing at a cable. I'm just using a band. It's good constant tension. Um, and if you have, I don't have like ankle straps or anything which make this exercise a little bit better, but I just grab a resistance band, wrap it around your foot, and then you're good to go. One little extra tip, instead of bringing your leg straight back, we're gonna go at a slight angle, just slight little diagonal. Not that this is wrong, but I like to hit that like little outside of my booty, gives you the little booty dimples. So we're gonna come forward and then slightly out and up. Bring your leg up, in, and then you're just at an angle and extend up as high as you can. Not that this is wrong, but if you want to just get a little bit more of that outside of your glute, you're just going to come a little bit at an angle. Now, I am doing the same leg. You're doing both exercises with the same leg before switching. So you're doing your low Bulgarian, put the dumbbells down, grab your band, same leg, you do your glute kickbacks then you will then switch to the opposite side do both sides or do both legs with both exercise or do <laughs> so many words do the opposite leg with both exercises and that would be one set so we got three to four sets of this depending on how you feel let's get it <laughs> Super set. We are going to do a barbell stiff like a dead. Now you can also do dumbbell um, or even kettlebell. So we're doing a barbell because I think it's going to be easier to show you the bar path, but you can do the same thing with a dumbbell. And then we are going to set that with hyper extensions for our glutes, not our low back. And there will be some really key tips like the hip thrust. This is also something that I think people 
do wrong a lot and even i did too but really big tip on that one how to really feel it in your glutes so first off uh we're gonna go with our stiff legged dead so deadlifts are great hams and glutes are gonna be firing so the biggest difference here um mostly i see people and they'll have barbell or dumbbells and they're just keeping that bar right next to their shins and that's fine that is great uh but i'm gonna actually have you let the bar drift away from you which you'll get even a better stretch so you'll get a good stretch here and that's it's amazing but we're gonna let that bar drift away from us and then we're gonna pull it back in all right as far as feet placement i generally am going to do about a shoulder width grip or shoulder yeah shoulder width stance not grip uh shoulder width stance and the name of the game here is especially on glute and ham dig i always just have a slight flare of my toes anytime you do that you're going to get a little bit extra contraction from that outer glute um, hands are going to be on the outside of your uh, leg so as you come up they're not going to be dragging up your hand uh, up your quads they're going to be on the very outside feet shoulder width out bar path again is going to drift out to your toes you're going to squeeze your butt to then then lift your, the weight back up and lift your torso hips forward ugly butt which is also the name of the game today we're looking for really good butts but a <laughs> to get a good butt you need to create an ugly butt science ugly butt that should be the main picture it should just be me like ugly butt in it right in front <laughs> all that we're like what the fuck is wrong with her that butt is ugly but you need an ugly butt to create a nice butt so here we go feet shoulder width slightly out grip if you need if you're going a little heavier you can do a alternate grip where one is forward one is back just helps you with grip strength but we're not going super heavy right now back is nice and flat you're gonna have a slight bend in your knees it's not i know it says stiff legged deads or they say straight legged deads your legs are never completely straight they're always going to have a slight bend and they even bend ever so slightly when you go down as you go down your butt is going to just go back sort of like a romanian uh romanian deadlift your butt draws back you're going to let that weight pull you and you'll feel a really good pull in your hamstrings you're going to contract your butt so you can even practice this when you contract your butt your upper body wants to move up and that's the that's the start of the movement coming back up so you squeeze your butt together all the weight on that outside of your heels right here my toes generally aren't even touching the ground heel uh weight in the outside of your heels knees flare out and then squeeze thrust forward ugly butt here we go So I like to start up at the top, slightly bending your knees, let that bar drift out to your toes. And if you're pretty flexible like me, you can elevate yourself so that the weight doesn't touch the ground. So maybe putting some plates, just stack like two plates on top of each other and then you'll just do a deficit. So most, most guys, don't need that but girls we're super flexible and we can really get down there so i'll probably add some plates for some deficit but i want to show you the bar path first so instead of dragging it down here which i feel more in my lower back drifting out squeeze your butt hips forward i'm gonna add just like a plate and do a little bit of a deficit but before we get to that you'll see that in a second Let's go over to hypers. So hypers, we're going directly from the stiff legged dead, and then we'll go directly to a hyper extension. Now, 
big thing here is we want to use our glue. So the pad, you'll notice, it usually, if well, it should, it will, it moves up and down. The higher up it is, I guess I could show you if it moves nicely. There it is. All right, so if I wanted to work my lower back, my abductors, or erectors, not abductors, <laughs> my erectors, which are all the muscles in your back, you would have the pad pretty, pretty high up so that you're basically doing a back bend. I'm folding in half and then extending. That is for your erector. So we're working our glutes. So you're gonna drop this thing, probably mostly all the way down. The pad is gonna stop, hopefully, depending on how tall you are, right about where your hip crease is again, right at like your pelvic bone. So that most of your body is gonna be off. Feet are gonna be, again, shoulder width apart. This time I want you to flare your feet out just a little bit more. Now the biggest part of this move is gonna be, I want you to round your back. Yes, round your back. It's not a bad thing. It's gonna help you focus just on your glutes. So your feet are out. You're gonna round your back completely over. And then I want you to keep that position throughout the full range of motion. And the range of motion shouldn't go all the way back here. You're gonna stop right about here. Cause if I go any further, I now am hitting my erectors. Now it's my lower back. So we wanna turn those erectors off. And the way you're gonna do that is rounding your back. So now they're not in use. If I go like this and straighten and keep a neutral position, which we would generally do with all exercises, this is the first time I'm gonna tell you, do not do a neutral spine position. You're gonna round. So upper back is completely rounded over. I like to kind of have my hands behind me and it keeps me kind of folded over. Uh, if you wanna add weight, you could grab a plate and just hold it on your chest or you can also add a band. So round it over. And the trick here to start the movement is you just squeeze your butt. So again, practice this one, get in your rounded position, let your butt relax and then squeeze it. And you can already notice my body wants to come up. So boom, this is just squeezing our butt. And then we're gonna add a little bit of our hamstring and a little bit more glutes and we're gonna come all the way or not all the way up. You're gonna go until you get to the top of the movement where our glutes are concentrated the most. So rounded, squeeze your butt. And this is where I end. You stay rounded over and then you come back down, relax your butt, squeeze your butt and you're back up. It's not a huge movement, but this is completely focused on our glutes and my lower back is completely out of it. So this is the one time I'm gonna tell you, I don't know if it's the one time, but it's one of the few times that I'll tell you to round your back. Whoo! And then we'll be done. We got four sets of this. We're gonna estimate around like a 10 to 12 for the stiff-legged deads. And then maybe 12, I'll say, let's go 15 to 20 for this. Uh, if you wanna add weight, add weight or add bands, then you can drop it down a little bit. But I'm just gonna do just simple body weight and just really, really focus on that squeeze at the top of the movement hold for a good two second count. <sighs> this is it guys, we're almost done. Anaconda don't want none unless you got balls, huh? So I hope you guys enjoyed this glute-focused workout. We're here to build 
some big booties for Sir Mix a lot because he loves them and I love them too and so does the whole world so I hope you enjoyed this full workout I just said that why am I saying it again hope you enjoyed those tips <laughs> what am I even saying all right I hope you enjoyed these tips make sure you try all of them out those just small little techniques can really make a huge difference in some of those exercises that we all do and we all love so try them out and let me know that's gross on butts huh